American people. And here is where President Obama falls down. He does not anticipate dangerous situations. He does not have strategies at the ready. Therefore, the terror threat is rising, and villains like Putin are gaining power. It's just a matter of time before America is harmed by bad people. The murder of journalist James Foley was just a preview of what is very likely to continue to happen on a far greater scale. President Obama must wise up and fast and become far more aggressive in blunting threats to this country. And we the people need to start paying attention as well because it is we who hold the real power in this country. And believe me, we are not using it. And that's the memo. Now for the top story reaction. Joining us from Washington, Fox News analyst Charles Crowder. Now let's take China first because we haven't talked about that country much. How do you see their aggressive tactics? Chinese are always very careful. They're very incremental, but they are relentless. And they can see what they would call a paper tiger when they see one. And they have never seen one more thin uh, and less reliable than Barack Obama. I mean, what, what prevents them from expanding as they want to do, expanding their influence and their control? And they're pushing into the East China Sea, the South China Sea, into areas that are claimed by all the countries around them, and they are ignoring them and establishing their control with the, in the air and on the ground and in the sea. The one power that would deter them is the United States, but not with this president. So they buzz one of our planes yesterday. Our reaction is very little rhetorically. Obama decides to send a carrier. I guess he was handled a checklist where it says send a carrier. But is there anything he said, any warning, any explanation to the American people about what's happening? It shouldn't have to happen on this show. It does, but this is not where it ought to be. Right. The reason he doesn't Obama define a situation, but but I need you to define it. Why is China? saber rattling in international waters trying to seize islands that have traditionally belonged to japan vietnam and the philippines why are they doing that china has for at least 50 years you could argue a millennium but let's say at least since the second world war since the communists came to power wants to dominate the region wants to dominate the pacific rim countries all of whom are allied with us south korea japan the philippines all the way down, all the way down to, in fact, to Vietnam, which is a de facto uh, ally of ours. They wanted to dominate. They want to be the regional hegemon. But to do that, they have to get rid of the U.S. Navy. And if they get rid of us, they become the dominant power, control the resources, and they essentially control what the other countries do. If the U.S. Okay. is not there, as we have been for 50 years, to deter them and protect the weaker powers, they will become the dominant power. Okay, but President Obama doesn't really have to define it to the American people because the American people know nothing about it, all right? They just well, don't know. Well, that's because he's never said anything about it. Or the media hasn't said anything about it, and, and nobody has defined the issue the way we're doing it tonight. So you can go out on the street. I mean, I don't even think most of the American people know about ISIS. I don't think they know because most don't watch television news or read the newspaper anymore. They don't know about the threats. That's why we have presidents. That's why we have leaders. People have their own lives, they have their own affairs, they have their own livelihoods, they have their families, they have a lot on their plate. When it comes to leadership about what's happening in a far corner of the world, you go to the president. The country was not interested in Europe between the First and the Second World Wars. It needed an FDR who could see what was happening to mobilize them, at least spiritually, prepare them for Pearl Harbor. We know uh, um, Reagan was the one who girded us against the Soviets. People and George H. W. Bush, do you think there was a clamor in the country to, to, to kick Iraq out of Kuwait? There was none. But you had a president who understood the stakes, explained them over and over to Americans, was able to rally an alliance behind them after he had said, either you, could you come with us or we're going to do this alone, created All right. a coalition. That's called so presidential the question leadership. Now, all right. So then the final question is, why isn't Barack Obama leading the way many past presidents have? Why? Look, there are 10 theories I could offer, but the one that strikes me the one as the most is he defines himself as anti-Bush. 
He sees his mission in life as taking us out of wars. That's how he got elected. He thinks that if we leave places, nothing will change and we'll all be safe. Can't believe we'll that. Just he can't believe that. He's governed that he way for five years. I know, but he can't believe it, Charles. He can't believe it when he sees people being beheaded in front of cameras. He sees uh, 35,000 miles of, of territory taken over by a terrorist army. He sees China's provocation and Russia's provocation. He can't believe that nothing bad is going to happen. He can't. That's impossible. You can't believe that he can't believe it, but he does. I've been arguing this since 2009 when he withdrew our power from Iraq, withdraws it. He doesn't do a, th a thing about the expansion of Russia. He barely bats an ally when the Chinese are expanding into East and South China Seas. He does this for years and years. Now to admit that all of these things have gone sour is to admit that everything he's done for the five years has been a mistake and a misunderstanding of the world. That is hard for anyone to do, and with Obama, with his streak of narcissism, it is impossible for him to do. Yeah, it's almost six years now, and it is, but as I said, if we continue down this road, it's going to be disastrous for the country. Charles, thanks very much.